So here we are in San Polino and I am Katia and this is Gigi <laughs> and we're sitting in the sitting room of our house which is quite a simple house and uh, a 600 year old house or even more 800 yeah, year old maybe 800 maybe nine <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah and we've been living here for a long, long time. Yeah, yeah, 30 years, is it? Yeah. Yeah, 30 years. 30 years. My goodness me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got the rights to a hectare of Brunello and a hectare and a half of Rosso di Montalcino. And then the decision was, shall we do it or not? And he really wanted to. And so, you know, I knew nothing, I knew nothing about it. And I said, yeah, let's do it. I like the idea of the countryside. <laughs> Liking the idea of the countryside is very different from actually working in the countryside I was to learn. But I do not regret that choice, not for one day. No, sometimes one day I do, but not really, because it's quite exciting. Having vineyards, if it, it's just a vast world, so it goes from botany, um, to agriculture, to economics, politics, accounting, design, taste, smell, colour, um, landscape gardening, community, individuals, um, label design, I mean you name it, cooking, because you do wine pairing, um, you do you like cooking, okay, then you make your own vegetable garden, etc, uh, etc. Et and there is, it's a hugely vast world. You're good at writing, write about it. You're good at smells, smell these wines, tell us how to make them better. You know, there's, there's space for everybody. And that, that is the wonderful thing about this all. And now, now we have actually, um, seven hectares of productive vineyard and um, two hectares of which we'll go to afterwards were planted. This will be their third summer so they'll have a small amount of production. The vines where we are now are um, we planted 20 years ago exactly and all our planting obviously has been done with total regard to um, organic principles and principles of, um, you know, of trying to see the winery as, uh, as an in interconnected organism. You can think of something like soil and you can think, okay, what is soil? And I think most of us would be hard pressed to say what it is. We know we walk on it, we, we plant our flowers in it, we get it on our shoes and have to clean them when we get in the house, but what is it? And, you know, if I pick up this, I don't, I'd be hard, I, I really would, I'd find it difficult to answer because I've read about it and so on, do I quite remember? But look, I pick up this and I've got quite a lot of this in my hand, but a teaspoon, in a teaspoon of soil, we would find more microorganisms in here than there are stars in the, the Milky Way. I don't know if there's more stars than in the universe, but there are millions and trillions of microorganisms in here. And there's some sand and there'll be clay, there'll be all sorts of stuff. And there'll be the sedimentary rocks which have been broken down by the funguses. And it's, yeah. These are the things that we ought to know about because they're, they're the stuff that keep us alive. Look at the sunlight falling on this leaf. It gets the sunlight and that, that sun particle of sun has come off the sun eight minutes, 40 seconds ago. And it arrives, that photon arrives on the leaf of the plant and it excites electrons, which sets up a chain response in the reaction center of the leaf. And that immediately, in less than the blink of an eye of the time, less, sets up the processes of photosynthesis. And so photosynthesis is just water, carbon, um, oxygen. 
and making sugars which go down into the root of the plant and it feeds these funguses under the soil and that is quite a miraculous event because then the funguses go right down into the soil and they burrow into these sedimentary rocks and they pull out the minerals meanwhile breaking up the sedimentary rocks to turn that's why these rocks are continuously coming up to the surface and bothering us. Um, and the minerals are brought up to the roots of the plant. 